Welcome, welcome, everyone. Welcome. Welcome, everyone. If you do have a background, I sent out some new ones today, but I may have missed some of it. Uh, please put them on, and then I will jot down the ones that I'm missing. Hello, Jen. We're so glad that you're settled, hopefully, somewhere and safe. She's been traveling across the nation, moving, it seems like, forever. <laughs> I'm going to be settled in. I'm going to have a home, and I'm not even going to know how to act. Like... <laughs> <laughs> all right so while we're letting others in let's go ahead and warm up the chat um and get our backgrounds on if you have it hello martin oh, so glad you're here thank you for being here um thank you good to Lenana, should i check my email did you send me one um, I sent it in Facebook Messenger unless I miss some of you. So please check that. Let me, I'm checking now. Okay. Hello, Angela. Welcome, welcome. So let's warm up that chat. You know, if you're, let's go ahead and put, you know, your blood type, your mother's maiden name. <laughs> I can some social security numbers please yes please go <laughs> ahead you know your uh your childhood uh address elementary school now let's go ahead and put in your email addresses your appointment link you know those important things that we need to know so that we can reach out and get to know each other better um our business is better figure out how we can get to know each other and help each other build our businesses and i am now muting my phone that is a good thing to do as we get started as i always forget so all right so we're warming up the chat and then we're going to start um let's see let's start with jocelyn we'll put jocelyn on the spot first Jocelyn, introduce yourself. One great thing about you and one great thing you love about your business. And then we'll go to Kelly. Okay. Well, hi, I am Jocelyn Bilodeau, and I'm located in Southern Ontario, about 45 minutes outside of Toronto. And what I love about me is my quirkiness, right? Like I like to really you know, laugh and make people laugh, right? And really connect that way. Um, and something I really like about my business is being able to use um, my Reiki, my energy uh, when um, talking and um, discussing things with clients. It's being able to hold that container of space for people. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, Jocelyn. Make sure you're putting all your information in the chat, please. And tell me. And then we will go to Jen. Hi, everybody. Kelly Doran, also from Ontario. I'm about an hour and a half east of Toronto, the other side, opposite of Jocelyn. Um, one thing about me, I eat whole food plant-based and love being plant-based buddy for, with people. Uh, one thing I like about my business is being able to give people hope with a drug-free, non-invasive, wearable pain relief patch. Awesome, awesome. And Kelly, please put your information in the chat. And then we'll go to Jen and then Heather. I am Jennifer Falloon. And for the next two months, I am in Mesa, Arizona. And what I love about me is even though I'm transient and I'm never in one place, um, sometimes longer than a week, I make the most of that week and I will invariably make a friend. If I was here a day, I would find somebody to network with and befriend them. Yes. Why not? Right. If I'm in the grocery line waiting to check out, I'm almost an embarrassment my children, even though they're grown, even my grandchildren will run the other way 
and they, oh, no, because I will know about the person in front of me and the person behind me before it gets my turn. Because that's just who I am. Why not talk if you're standing in line, right? But not just talking. I'm truly connecting. They know who I am, what I do, and I know who they are and what they do. So it's always greatness. So thank you, Jen. Make sure you're putting that information in the chat. Heather, let's go to you. Hello, I'm Heather Halverson from Nova Scotia, Canada. So just a few provinces away from Kelly and... And oh, oh, sorry, and and yes, yeah, sorry. Um, so we moved here actually just over two years ago, and I absolutely love it. And about me is for every subscription subscription I have in my business, we give um nutrition to a child in need and help stop the human trafficking. Awesome. I love that about Heather's business. Absolutely. All right, Tamara. And then we will go to Abby. Well, good afternoon, everybody. And uh, hold on a minute. I forgot to mute my phone. <laughs> um, anyway, um, my name is Tamara Patrick and I own, um, yeah, that's what I own today. My phone just blew all my mind. Anyway, it's just for you, Life Brigade, life coaching for just for restarting you. And um, what do I like about my business? I think I just like to be me. I just want to help other people and be who I am. And I know sometimes I'm a little crazy, but I like to be that way. So that makes me feel better about being in the business that I'm in. So that's what I like about it. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, I'm going to, right now, um, my granddaughter has cleaned the house again. So now <laughs> I lost funny. all my notebook. <laughs> I lost my notebook again. And uh, she has a real bad habit of losing my notebook. I'm going to have to break her arm. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> anyway, Tamara, go ahead and get your information in the chat for us, please. I'm trying to, I will. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right, Abby or Teresa, are either one of you on? All right, let's go to Christine. Go ahead, come on down, Christine, and then we'll go to Abby. Hello, hello, hello. It's good to see y'all. I hope you all had a great new year. Um, I'm Christine Skiff. I own Gift and Author Publishing, and we are a uh, we are a publishing company for independent authors that offers all the big services of the large publishing houses. We have in-house editors, illustrators, um, formatters all the way to doing bulk bulk printing and shipping um, from China. So we even do uh, merchandising. So we have it all. And um, what I love about my job is I genuinely love hearing people's stories and helping them bring them to the world. I just, it to me is the biggest gift you can give someone is the gift of your story. And I just love hearing them. So uh, I'm glad to be here today. And I think that's it. All right. Thank you, Christine. Please put all your information into the chat. Then we're going to go to Abby and then to Teresa. Much. I uh, greatly appreciate the opportunity and I love the new backgrounds. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I'm Abby, your computer angel, and I'm flying in from tech heaven to give your computer more life and protection. What would happen if your computer broke down right now and how would it affect your business? I'm sure it wouldn't be pleasant. Most tech shops hold on to your computer for a week or so. Uh, I, I love to turn that those computer frowns into smiles and give your computer, let the computer stay with you. Um, I do all my work online and it's my pleasure to give your computer more performance and protection. Um, if your computer is frustrating you with, uh, or you're overwhelmed with the, with it, give me book a call with me, and I'll fly in to help you. 
Thank you. Awesome, Abby. And please make sure you put all your information into the chat. And Teresa, and then we will go to Lima. Hi, I'm Teresa Paul. I'm a codependent recovery mentor. And so I will put my information in the chat once I get home. Yes, please don't do that while you're driving, Teresa. Thank you very much. <laughs> Keep yourself very safe. Yes. All right, Lima. Hi, my name is Lima McLean. Um, I'm a real estate investor and mentor. Um, I um, teach people how to buy real estate using my no money down methods, no credit, no mortgage. And um, I also uh, have like bunches of events every month, um, different topics, niches, you name it, um, where I help uh, speakers, you know, to get exposure for their businesses and to gain high ticket clients. That's awesome, Lima. Thank you. And please make sure you're putting all your information in the chat. And then we'll go to Dar and then to Angela. Good evening, everybody. Um, Happy New Year. And I am a person who creates a Chrome Crafts greeting cards. Um, they are each individually created just for you. And uh, each one is unique and um, they are to make people feel warm and fuzzy inside. Awesome, dog. Awesome. Please put your information in the chat. We'll go to Angela and then Martin. Hello, everyone. So um, I am a, uh, what I enjoy about what I do and what I do is um, helping people in their intimate lives through menopause and through aging process. Um, I bring people together in their relationships as well as individuals. Um, so I'm a, a life coach in the sexual arena. Yes. Perfect. I Thank think you. I covered everything. Yes. yes. Perfect, Angela. Make sure you're putting all your information in the chat and then we'll go to Martin, please. Hi, well, thank you for inviting me. Uh, and my name is Marty Green. I am from Palm City, Florida. What I love about what I do is it enables me to fulfill my purpose, which is to leverage my endless curiosity and love of sharing what I discover to support and, and enable people to become a better version of themselves. Uh, in that light, what I run, so I founded a, the Top of Mind Academy, where folks can learn how to communicate and lead more effectively, and most important, be effective in that moment when things aren't occurring to you. You know how people say, "Well, I, I didn't know what to say. I, I only thought about it after the conversation." Well, we we help you get yourself into that mindset in the moment, in that frame, so you can be effective every time in any situation, and. Um, my contact information is in there, but uh, Top Mind Academy is a place to not only learn, but also practice what you learn on with other people. So it's a that that is me. I'm Marty Green, and glad to be here. And by the way, I'm like Jen. I, although I used to be an introvert, it took me a little time to learn how to talk to people at the at the checkout counters. But that that's the fun part now. That's right. That's right. Very beautiful. All right, Martin. Thank you so much. Uh, your information in the chat, please. I am LaDonna McAbee, and I love to teach people, strategize with others about how to truly connect, network, and collaborate with those people that fill your bubble that is great for you and your business and people that you truly want to work with. So... With that said, I will get all of my information put in the chat while our beautiful Sherry comes up and she has the next 25-ish minutes to speak. Woohoo! Oh, Woo we have one second. Before you do that, Dar, let's go ahead and do our snapshot real quick so that okay. you can have that, please. I yeah, absolutely. All right, everyone. Okay, everybody wave. <laughs> There we go. 
Beautiful. Thank you. That was <laughs> everyone. Okay, Sherry, the floor is all yours. Come on down. Awesome. Thank you so much, LaDonna. It's always a pleasure to, to be here and to share. Today is no exception. Today, we're going to talk about soaring in 2024. Uh, I wouldn't be me if I wasn't talking about setting goals, but keeping self-love at the core. Because <laughs> if you know me, you know that that's what I do. Um, I help you stand up and stand out as the unrepeatable miracle that you are uh, through the Wow Warrior platform, which I can talk about later if you like. But today, I just want to say thank you for joining. And as we step into 2024, uh, it is a year full of potential and promise right before us. You always say, you know, it's a fresh book and we have a new page and there's nothing on it. And here we go. But you know what? There's there's always stuff that comes with that. And, you know, 2023 was a year, you know, not like not like any other. Everyone is different and everyone comes with those challenges along with the triumphs and the things that we do well it's also been a year of still recovering from post COVID and, and a lot of businesses still trying to find their way in 2023. So today though, I wanna focus on uh, what were the, the future. Um, you know, the journey of setting a goals is really grounded, um, I believe needs to be grounded in a very important principle. And it's self-love. Everything I do really emanates from that core of self-love and self-acceptance. So I'm going to share a few thoughts with you as we enter into the new year of 2024. I want you to first get an understanding of what self-love is. Um, self-love is really about accepting ourselves and respecting ourselves and our needs. Uh, making those choices that uplift our well-being based on what we need. It's about prioritizing our own needs so that we can pour into others. As business owners, that's what we do. We serve others. But when we do well, when we are well, we can do well for others. That's the point. It's very hard to care for others when we don't care for ourselves. Now, some people think self-love sounds very selfish, but in truth, it's really about giving ourselves the same kindness that we offer everyone else, our clients, our coworkers, literally everyone we know, our family, but we often don't, we cheat ourselves. We don't give that to us. We don't treat ourselves half as well as we treat those around us. And I really want to point out that 2024 is about you being strong at your core and treating you as well as possible. Loving yourself fully so that we're more resilient, emotionally stable, and physically healthier because we deserve that. And understanding that self-love isn't just for you. It's not selfish. It's truly for everyone around you. So the second thing I want to talk about is reflecting on the past with kindness. Uh, it's really impossible to move forward without at least glancing back, right? And in my book, I actually talk about the rear view mirrors only this big, right? And the windshield's huge. And the reason is because the rear, the rear view mirror is for just checking to make sure that that's not the way we're going, right? It's a safety thing. But your future is in front of you. You see everything moving forward and we're moving forward. We're not going back there. We want to remember what was back there so we can improve. So we want to make sure that we are looking back and we are taking the best of what we need, but we don't wanna dwell on what went wrong. We wanna look at those challenges as opportunities for growth because you get to choose to focus on whatever you want, right? And people will say, how was your 2023? And inherently our minds, because our brains are actually wired this way, they will go to the things that we missed the things that we didn't quite get right, or we didn't quite land the plane, so to speak. But here's the reality. You get to choose what you focus on moving forward. So we do want to look back at 2023 and want to say, well, if I didn't hit my sales goals or I didn't hit, I didn't scale as big as I wanted, or I didn't get this or that, understand that those things are the catalysts for your growth. They're not failures. They're what you get to use to move forward, to grow, right? And this is why 
as we reflect with kindness, we we need to learn how to celebrate the really the the small victories that might not to other people be perceived as victories. Um, I want to share one that I have actually is because I I really love to paint and draw, and so I started doing that uh, in December, and I did it primarily because I wanted to give gifts. That's kind of my my love language is a very personal you know, painting or drawing or whatever. And so I was doing quite a bit of that in December, but what I realized that was a huge victory for me because I realized how much I love that. Like that really fills me up, uh, tapping that creative, uh, center of me. So I want to ask you, did you start a new hobby? Did you read more books? You know, for me, I painted more and I drew more pictures. That is a victory for me. But I want you to make sure that as we're looking back and reflecting with that kindness, that we see everything, not just the things that we missed. And I do want to remind you that sometimes the things that didn't go as planned is because you were meant to learn something from falling short. And I don't want you to miss that lesson in that because there is a blessing in that. Perhaps that was meant for you to learn something from that. Rather than if you, if you do everything right the first time, you really don't learn that much. Let's be honest. We learn more from the things that don't go right than the things that do go right. Because sometimes we don't know why they went right. So, you know, take that when we're looking back at that year of 2023 into 2024 as something that you can look to do better in 2024. Now, I want to remind you that not everything and not every victory um, is reflected in dollars and cents, but sometimes they just make sense for our well-being. So never discount those little things. Now, I want to talk a little bit about goal setting and making sure that it's infused with self-love because I believe that that is critical. Most of you are familiar probably, or you've heard like smart goals and, you know, that's, that's a whole talk unto itself, but I'm just going to kind of give you the loose framework of that. Smart goals are goals that are specific. That's the S measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound, uh, meaning they are attached to an actual date of completion. And you know what, that's the most important thing in my mind of all of all of the letters in that is really the time bound one, because a goal without a date is actually just sort of a wish. It's like, oh, I wish that were the case, or I wish this was that. You know, we need to make sure that those goals that we set are attached to an achievable, like I would call it a checkbox, right? I can say, oh yes, this was very specific. I, I measured it, it was trackable. Yes, I could achieve it. I did achieve it. It was relevant to the whole of what my business goals are. And I did it by X date. That's the way to really set that and push yourself to that date. Now, if you don't hit it, I mean, it's not like you're a complete failure. And I'm like, I think we have this thing where it's either a pass or a fail. And it's it's really, that's just not it. The thing is we have to be able to align those goals with our well-being, right? Not just our wealth. To truly soar, you really need to stay grounded in that self-love and well-being. So when you're making those smart goals, you need to have, you need to like really make room, I think probably for the grace. I don't know, there's probably should be a G in that smart word somewhere. Uh, because you have to be able to give yourself grace if you fall short. I want you to remember though, when you're really setting those goals, because we, we sort of build this thing up into like January 1st, it's a new year, let's go. And I'm going to do all this. And like, it makes it really big, right? But I want you to remember to balance your ambition with the self-care. Because if your goal is career advancement, expansion, scaling, whatever, it's got to be paired with some self-care in there and self-love practices. Because otherwise, the only thing you're going to excel out, sell at is burnout. And avoiding burnout is as crucial as achieving success because there's a tremendous amount of research. Uh, well, and movement is one of the best ways to avoid that burnout. 
Um, there's a tremendous amount of research out there that suggests that just seven minutes of vigorous exercise is life changing. They're not, you don't need to worry about going to the gym for an hour. I would ask you to think about committing to seven minutes. Listen, set a timer for three and a half minutes, walk out your front door, walk as fast as you can. And it goes off, push reset and walk back. Doesn't matter how far you got. That wasn't the point. The point is the movement, right? We're making it too hard. It's not about an hour in the gym. It's about moving. So I want to encourage you, if you aim to exercise more in 2024, just choose something that you enjoy and put it in a bite-sized piece so that you're not setting yourself up for failure. It's not just about, it's, it's about feeling good, not just about looking good, right? And I do want to remind you also, if you don't know, uh, you know, there's a tremendous amount of endorphins that are released with movement. Your brain literally lights up like with all kinds of beautiful colors when you do have that movement, which is why it's so important. Um, but I also don't, I don't know if you know this, but when you exercise, one of the reasons why exercise is recommended in the morning or first thing is that within two hours of you exercising, that is the smartest you will be all day. So whatever task you have to do, you should always do within two hours, the hardest one you should do in the two hours after you exercise. This is why it's a bit of a challenge for people that exercise in the evening um, because that's when your brain's on fire. It's ready to go and it's ready. It's firing, firing, firing. And if that's the time when you sit down and you're relaxing and maybe watching TV, you're actually losing the biggest part of your brain power. So just keep that in mind as you're making those goals to move more, um, to make your, put yourself in a position to win, right? And that would be to put those harder tasks within that two hour time frame. You know, because of that two hour time frame, I like to jump from this part to go talking about, you know, making the to do list, right? The goal list, the big giant things. It's not very helpful to have 10 things on that list. I don't know about any of you, but if I see 10 or 15 things on that list, I just, I'm like, I can't figure out where to start. And so I've actually dialed back and I really believe that we should never have more than three things on our list. The hardest thing that you have to do, the thing that will take the most brain power, that will be the most complicated, you should always have is your first thing. If you never get to two and three, it's fine. Do one. The, the thing that you requires the most of you, you do within two hours after your movement and you focus on that one priority because it's more about being consistent than it is about the killing the whole list. So I'm going to tell you, if you have three things and you knock off two of the three things, you're like, oh, I didn't do too bad, right? If you have 10 things and you and you do six out of the 10, you will inherently see the four that you missed and think, oh, I didn't get everything done. Like it's just the way, it's the same percentage though, y'all. It, 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 it is the way our brains work. We will focus on what we didn't finish. So listen, if three is too many, do one. One thing consistently to move your business forward every day, the consistency is more important than the number of things that you do. So when you're setting those goals, don't set yourself up for failure by making you have this enormous 20, 30, 40, you know, odd numbered list. Break it down into something that is doable that you can actually point to and say, this is a smart goal. This is very specific. I need to do this every day to win in my business. Put one thing. If that's how you avoid overwhelm is one thing a day, then do that one thing and do it consistently. You will still gain more ground with one thing. If you can do three, great. Don't do more than three until unless you're just consistently after a month knocking those three things off your list every day, then maybe you can do five. Everyone is different. You do you and make sure that it works for you. So the other thing I want to talk about is maintaining your self-love through your year as you are committing to those goals. 
when you, and you will, fall short, slip up, not quite make it, I want you to remember that every day can be your day one. If you say, oh crap, it's January 2nd and it didn't work out yet this year. And your whole goal is I'm going to work out 365 days. I don't care. Tomorrow can be January 1st. My friend Shay Brown always says, today is your January 1st. Every day can be your January 1st. It's just about when you start. It's not about what the actual day is. It's what you do today. And so show up for yourself today. If you didn't feel like you didn't do that today, I mean, you did really well because you're here, right? You showed up for yourself here. So you already did that for today. Tomorrow, show up for yourself again tomorrow. Make sure that there's no room for beating up on yourself because if you woke up today and you're breathing and you kind of all look like you're breathing, you already won a lot more than some people who didn't wake up today. Everything is not a win or lose or a pass or fail. Sometimes it's just about the forward progress and doing something, not everything. Just do something. I want you to think about incorporating activities like meditation and journaling into your life. Mm, with the caveat, because these are great self-reflection type things where you get to take a moment, pause, and look at what you're doing, what you're accomplishing. Am I treating myself well? Am I doing well in my business? However, I think the thing that comes into play when people say, you have to journal every day, journal in the morning and journal at night. No, you don't. You have to do what works for you. So if you like to only journal in the morning because you're fresh and bushy eyed at 5 a.m., then do it. If you like to write in the quiet at 10 o'clock at night or 11 o'clock at night, then that's what you do. Nobody else can tell you what works for you. The key is to do what meets you where you are, that you feel good about your business and about yourself, because that's what works for you. If you journal once a week or three times a week, Terrific. If you journal when it strikes you, congratulations, do that. It is not a cookie cutter system, but it is something that you have to have those practices that meet you. Like some people meditate every day before they do anything. And they're like, this is the morning routine you need to do. No, this is a great suggestion. This is what I teach. You can do it if it works for you. If it doesn't work for you, then don't do it. Do what works for you. It might work for LaDonna and it might not work for me. The point is you do what helps you right where you are and focuses on your path and do what serves your business. And it's okay to modify your goals. I have people that are like, oh, I have my goals all done for 2024 in November. Well, congratulations, overachiever. You're awesome. Uh, and that's great but maybe you did them in December. Maybe you just did them two days ago. But here's the thing, it's okay to modify your goals always. If you just did them two days ago and you looked at them this morning and you thought, what the heck? I can't do that. I don't wanna do that. That's okay because maybe it was too overwhelming. Maybe it was too lofty. Maybe it was too many things. And now you're looking at it and you're going, oh, I can't. You can modify your goals at any time. This is where I say, you're the boss, applesauce. You're the boss of you. Take charge of you, your business, and what you want to do. You're the only one that matters in the goal setting and the goal execution, checking off the list of the SMART goals. You're the only one that gets to do that. Life changes, and so do our needs, and so do our capabilities. And sometimes things come in our life, and we're like, oh, no, I don't have, I've got a lot of people with elderly parents, and they, sometimes I, I can't do what I thought I was going to be able to do. You've got to be able to adjust. It's okay. It's not set in stone. Change it. Choices create change. When you change your choices, your choices change. Life changes and so do our needs. We have to reassess. I, I typically will suggest a minimum of quarterly. I personally like to reassess monthly. I think it's a little bit more accurate and keeping my pulse on my business and my where I want to be, et cetera. 
And there's a question I want you to write it down for yourself. It's completely only for you to ask yourself when you're looking at those goals and you're making that reassessment, am I on track and does this make sense? Am I on track and does this make sense? You might see an app, you might see uh, this, you might go to a webinar and you're trying to decide whether to purchase something or whatever. Ask the question, am I on track and does this make sense to what I'm trying to do and accomplish in 2024? And if you're unsure where you're going, I encourage you to book an appointment with someone like myself or LaDonna. Yes, it costs money, newsflash, but that's because you need to invest in yourself. I actually charge $60 for an, a one hour session. I generally give you 90 minutes, um, but here's the thing. I'm not getting rich off that. I'm not looking for you know, lifelong coaching things. It's a one-off. It's like to help you jumpstart and catalyst, get that catalyst to get you going for what you want. And here's the reality. You're going to, you're going to invest it somewhere in little pieces. You, you, you can't do it alone. You know, the saying is you can go slow by yourself, but you can go a lot faster when you have a, a whole slew of people like that are on this screen to cheer you on. We have, we, people need people. Pat, Dr. Pat says it all the time. We've got to have people to help us. And as we embark on 2024, I want to remind you that self-love isn't a random concept. It's truly our guiding light in, in setting and achieving meaningful goals because everything we accomplish that is good and worthy comes from our own self-acceptance first. People do business with who they know, like, and trust but you first must ask yourself, do I know me? Do I like me? Do I trust me? Ask yourself right now, do I know myself, like myself, and trust myself? If it isn't a resounding yes to those, we've got to start making better goals. We've got to find coaches. We've got to get ourselves on track to, to excel by being clear with what we want to be and how we want to show up in the world. And I can tell you that expensive training programs and expensive coaches will not get you there if you cannot answer those three things with a resounding yes. Do I know myself, like myself, and trust myself? We want to approach 2024 with a heart full of self-compassion, self-trust, and the courage to pursue what truly matters to us right here, passionately in our core. Not just what others think we should do, what your mom said, what your sister said, when they said, what are you doing that for? I'm doing it because that's what speaks to me, right? It's about what you want. Because you can soar in 2024 if you're leading from your core passionately and you set those goals in alignment with caring for yourself and your own well-being. It's incredibly important. And I do want to thank you so much today and I'm happy to open it for questions for you. Um, but here's to soaring in 2024 and have an incredible year of growth, great health all things done with self-love and self-compassion because 2024 is your year for more. Thank you. That was awesome, Sherry, as always. And you know, everything you said, and one thing I want to add to that, sometimes it just depends on how I feel today of what I will achieve. Yep. You know, sometimes, you know, those baseballs just keep coming. Those curveballs just keep curving. And I just say, okay, I need a break. I'm going to go take that break because if I don't, my mind spins. Do you ever get the mind spins? I do. And that's when you tell yourself, okay, it's time to take care of me now. So always remember that. 
Um, and I so think you make a really good point, LaDonna, in that, you know, we have to be able to just give ourselves the grace to step away, um, to say, you know, I can't do that today. And, and it's okay that I can't do that. Um, you know, like I just spent some time with my daughter and son-in-law and granddaughter. And I, I pretty much, I don't want to say I totally checked out, but I checked out a pretty, pretty great distance. Uh, I launched a magazine at the same time, which, you know, which is why it wasn't a hundred percent. However, I needed to make sure I got that done, but I needed to be present, right? Because like my presence was important and my attention was important and family is a priority for me. And so, yes, sometimes it's like, I, I can't do that today. I made a mistake just being transparent and actually inadvertently <laughs> for a very odd reason, actually excluded uh, one of the authors that should have been in the magazine. Now, I'm not talking about you, LaDonna, because we had that snafu, but you caught it. And I was able to rectify that. And, and there's a whole host of reasons why that happened. However, I did miss one. And the irony of it all is, y'all, is I just have to tell you, it's because she gave it to me like six weeks before the deadline. It was so far in advance, I actually lost control of it. So, but I said to her, you know, like I had to give myself the grace. I apologized upside down and backwards and sideways and every other way. Oops, did I lose you? No, nope, you're here. Oh, I was like, I don't know. <laughs> Something just came up on my screen. It was super weird. Um, and the thing is, I felt so terrible, but I said to her, I'm so grateful that you came to me and that this happened, not because your article isn't in there, but because I had to streamline my practices because I can never have that happen again. And those contributors and such that when there will see those changes, I sat down on New Year's Eve morning. Well, yeah, it was New Year's Eve morning. And I spent about an hour and I created the entire date all for 2024. I didn't have that done. And um, it will be hardcore. And some people, if they don't turn it in in time, they just will not be in the magazine. I just, I made that decision. And part of that, and they have to turn it in a certain way. I had to make some changes because that was illuminated for me that I had created a, a not good process. <laughs> So there you go. Christine's yeah, nodding her head. No In the you publishing world, she time. absolutely knows this. Yeah. Yeah. Don't screw me up because you either did it too early <laughs> or you 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 at you're like two weeks after the deadline because you're screwing everybody else up. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You yes. give yourself you know. grace. And you know what? Yes. Um I had to sit with my team today. We had a little meltdown and I had to tell them, yes, we are growing. And yes, that's throwing some wrenches in because when you when you are growing as a team, as a business, as a company, there's new things on the horizon and nobody knows what everybody else is doing. I'm like, we can't have that anymore. But just like Sherry said, I had to set some things, align some things. I had to set up some alignment of no, for now on, it's this way. We're going to do it this way. And like she said, it's it's we want to blame ourselves. Let's face it, we always blame ourselves. That's just the way it is. Because the other people are never wrong, right? But <laughs> we do have to stay in alignment when you're in business. You just do. And here's the thing, y'all. I could have I could have beat myself up and say, oh, I'm horrible. I can't believe I did that. I didn't do that. What I know about myself is that I'm human and I would never have done it on purpose, right? I mean, it was not about that, but I did uh very openly say this was completely my fault. Uh, you did exactly what you were supposed to, but I did also give myself the grace because there were some things that happened in a sequence and it ended up being right over Christmas. I was trying to give my, my assistant time off in that time. And then I couldn't because people didn't turn their stuff in timely. And that was like the icing on the top of the cake. And I said, okay, I 
I will never do that again. So I changed all the dates, <laughs> the submission dates. I changed everything. I was like, okay, I'm going to clean this mess up. I took ownership of it. And here's the thing. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't feel like, oh, I did a terrible job at doing that. I'm just me. I'm human, right? I make mistakes as well as clearly. And, and I'm not ashamed of making a mistake. What I did is I took that and I'm like, I learned from that. Remember when I was speaking and I said, sometimes things happen because they're meant to teach you something. This was one of those things. It was meant to teach me to get your shit together, Sherry, because other people didn't get what they were supposed to because I didn't have my processes in place correctly. Exactly. Christine, come on down. Uh, yeah, I wanted to, um, I, I have had similar situations because we have multiple um, people working on the same project. We can have an illustrator. We have two editors, the author, you know, all working. And then you get 47 files, all different changes, different names. So my husband, who's my tech genius, uh, set me up with GitHub and um, it will take, everyone can be on it and it, it stays in the same file on, and there's a history of all the changes. It is a really great system it's very hard to get everyone on it and on board because they don't like the change but um, once they do github has been really great um, it's taken a lot of the craziness out of the back and forth just a suggestion thank you i appreciate I've never that i've heard of that thank have you sherry uh i just saw I viewed something that was in GitHub and I was like, I don't know what that is. It like fleetingly went across my brain just this morning. Yeah. I don't remember. I wouldn't have known. I am not techie um, other than what I know, but I do have very techie boy, um, sons and husbands. So they set me up with it and it's life changing. The amount of stress that has been relieved, especially when you have 20 different big projects and they all have multiple files and multiple people working on them. So much better. Everything's right there. So anyway, that's that's like all of our membership, we learn from each other on every level. I love it. I'll be looking into that. Thank you, Christine. You're what welcome. was the name of it, Christine? Sorry. GitHub, G-I-T-H-U-B. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And um, oh. also my husband sent uh, made a, a whole instruction sheet for my people. If you guys want it, I'm more than willing to send that out so that it's easy to follow and easy to set up. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. I have a question. Did anybody resonate with putting too many goals and too many things in your pipeline that you just go, oh. yeah. So what resonated with you doing something, one thing consistently or doing three things with them ranked with the, the most challenging first? Yes. Go ahead, Mark. Yeah, de definitely. What you said about that, as a matter of fact, I was having a conversation with somebody about that today. Uh, that sometimes people demand too much of themselves and then end up feeling deflated when they don't accomplish all of it. And so three was exactly the number I used. But I thought that you uh, said it so much better. Actually, you you added so much more uh, depth to that. And uh, so, yes, I definitely resonated with, and I used to be guilty of the same thing. I, I'd have a list a mile long. And now even the, the even a planner I have only has top three things you're going to accomplish today. So if my, my planner is actually disciplined me to do that, but still you sometimes slip, right? So thank you for that, Sherry. And, and so much more, your, your talk was fantastic. Thank you. And I think it's really always nice to have that, like, if I had time kind of thing. Cause like, if you knock all three things off your list and it's like 10 AM, you're like, Woo! but you can then go into the list and maybe pick a couple of things and do those. I mean, that's the way to feel like ultra, like awesome. Like I really got a lot done today, but I think that we tend to put all of those things in the pipeline and then we can only just focus on what we just couldn't finish. It, oh, one more thing I, I, that I was I took me took me all the way back to college, and that was that when I wanted to study, I would go play basketball for an hour or two before I studied. And I did my best all nighters after playing basketball. And even today, I do my best work, whether cleaning my office or doing work, 
after exercising or doing something active, uh, playing golf, whatever it is. But but yeah, that that the endorphins and the uh, melatonin you get, serotonin you get after working out, it, it gives you basically a high, but also makes you really focused. So thank you for adding that. Sure. And you know what? I want to also say, like you see, you guys might not have thought, oh, wow, what a great workout. Uh, Marty went and played basketball, but you know what? He loves basketball. So that's what he did. And that's why I said, do what you love. You like to walk, go walk, just walk fast. I mean, that's, that's the thing. It's not about the length. It's about the movement that creates that, uh, you know, body change and it lights your brain up. Do what you like. If you love seventies music, turn it up to eight, dance around your office, like a fool till you're sweating. It doesn't matter what it is. Nobody, it doesn't, you don't have to be in a gym lifting weights. Like as women going through menopause, lifting weights is phenomenal. It's great to have more muscle mass. You'll burn calories better. But you know what? The brain health is what's so important. The movement, that stirring that up. And actually there's there are cells in your brain that actually begin to, they no longer multiply unless you exercise which is why our brain capacity slows down as we get older. And we have to exercise to keep those, the telomeres, or I know uh, Marty probably knows all about that too, to, to, keep, to keep them growing and to keep them moving. You've got to have that movement. I don't care what it looks like, just move. And you Do know, squat that, while you're watching TV. Right I hate the gym. I hate walking. But take me to a flea market for 10 hours with me walking around, sweating. I'm, I'm, I'm there. I am there. That's my joy, though. See, it's not work. It's not working out to me. It's my joy. I may not buy anything, but I have put some miles on my legs. And that is what I love. Or taking the four-year-old to Chuck E. Cheese and, you know. Things like that. They're little jump houses and uh, things that they like to go jump on. The trampolines when you're chasing around them. That's joy. You find my gardening. I love my flower beds and my gardening. But see, that's not working out in my mind. I know it truly is. In your mind. But, but also, if you can do that, LaDonna, barefoot, even better. Because now you're grounding yourself as well. Um, there's a lot to be said for that. I mean, it's 31 uh, degrees here, so it's very cold. It's below freezing, so I will not be barefoot. However, uh, I know it's not that cold where you are. So, But that is another way to care for yourself, right? Going out and gardening, that's still movement. That's what works for you. Do you? You know, are you going to be the next bodybuilder by gardening? No, but that's actually not what you're trying to do. So that's totally okay. What is important is that you move. Yes. You know, people will contact me, for example, and say, what do you want to weight loss? No, I'm not trying to attract anyone. I'm just trying to be alive, feel great, chase after the grandbabies. You know, that's what I want to do in life. But I do want to be healthy enough to be able to do everything that I want to do. But no, I don't want to be 98 pounds anymore. I don't know if I was ever 98 pounds. <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's like, you know, it wasn't that's, second not, grade. <laughs> that's not who I am anymore. That's not what I want. I just want to feel great and be able to do all the things I want to do. That's the same thing with my business. I will be honest with you. I want my business to grow each and every day, week, month, year, whatever. Um, I don't know that I'll ever become a billionaire in one week, month, or year. But hey, if I do, I'll be very joyous. And I will run around the yard barefooted no matter what degrees it is, Sherry. <laughs> But I would do that I with you as well. <laughs> able to enjoy my life and my family is what I'm trying to say. Yes. So, and rewarding. Did you say anything about, you kind of did about rewarding yourself, reward yourself. My nails is how I reward myself. 
And I think that's a really individual thing. Um, I think uh, everybody does different things. You know, I think the one thing I would advise against is to re not reward yourself with food because like that, that is not, um, or if you're going to use something like that, that is a treat that it is a longer time period. Like if you consistently hit your goals, knock all three things off for seven days, that's when you do something. It's not like, oh, I did it today. Now I'm going to go to a candy bar. Like there has to be something if it's going to have any kind of food driven reward. I think yeah. you need to have it be longer. That's just yeah. my my personal opinion, because those the things that we sort of crave like that generally don't serve our, our physical bodies very well because they're usually sugar driven, um, which really just rot your brain out of your head and wreck exactly. your gut. <laughs> But there's other things topic. like my husband and I, we went out and celebrated um, because I'm, I matched all of my goals for 2023. Didn't do as well as my mental told me I wanted to do, but everything I had mapped out for the year I met. So we drove into Dallas and had this beautiful steak that was melted in your mouth. Nice. And and we shared one, but still it was, it was over the top and, um, you know what? It felt good. It felt. See, I think good. that's okay. Cause actually what you did was reward yourself with a relaxing time with him. There just happened to be food there. It wasn't yeah. necessarily just like the steak itself. You could eat steak at home. It's actually the celebration of the goals, right? And I think that's really an important thing. We we do need to celebrate, as I said, those victories along the way. They don't all have to be like, oh, I had a six-figure month. You know, like we hear this all the time with coaches, you know, I'm a seven, eight, now I'm here a nine-figure coach. I'm like, shut up. You know what? Like, get over yourself. That's not the reality of most people in business. We're all working to grow, but you know what? You're you're putting that so lofty out there that other people look at that and think, they're not talking to me, but you are whatever you think you are. You're right, you know? But the, but the reality is there's a lot of steps in between there and none of them are bad and none of them mean you're falling short. It's all a path, you know? It's like, you know, Marty talking about his top of mind academy like that you know you could take somebody that goes in there day one and somebody that's been in there six months and they're probably not at the same place are they no because they haven't done the practice they haven't met with the people they haven't done the coursework they're not in the same place you know we cannot look and that's one thing I didn't say and I I, I, I apologize run your own damn race y'all you got one race it's yours. Don't be looking over here. Don't be looking over there. Don't be saying, oh, Sherry, she does this. She's so whatever. Here, here's the thing. I'm just me. That's all I got. I can only do me. People say, well, you're, you're doing this. You have a magazine. I'm like, yep, I sure do. Did you want one? Like, cause I can tell you how I did it. <laughs> you, know, you know, like, I'm like, but don't look at what I'm doing. What do you want to do? And let's, let's talk about that. Like what makes you on fire for with what you're doing in your space? Like, you know, and shout out to Kelly, because I just want to say, like, I love the way that you shared what you do. Cause the last time I, I feel like that was a step up. So congratulations. I don't know if you felt good about that, but I heard the confidence in the delivery. So I just wanted to say shout out to you. Thanks, Sherry. <laughs> I did feel more confident too. Yes. And you know what? That's what we all need is confidence in ourselves. Believe in yourself. If you do not believe in yourself, no one else will because humans will see right through it. Yes. And you know what? Action, action is rewarded and inaction is an action and it will never give you anything. And actually what it does is it takes all of your power away. Inaction only allows one thing and it's a reaction and reaction is emotion driven and it will never serve you. So, you know, 
you actively, Kelly, clearly worked on that and have practiced it because I could tell. And I, I applaud you for that. You know, not that anybody else didn't do well. That's not what we're saying, because as we remember, we're all in our own lane, right? We all do what we do. Compare yourself this time to the next time you're on here, and then you can have your own data to compare to, right? We're, I'm specifically saying that to Kelly because I've seen an improvement on hers, you know, and, and so I wanted to acknowledge that, but I think this is what we need to do. We need to run our own race. The race is against us, ourselves. Yeah. Where was I last week? Where was I yesterday? Where was I last month? We're not in competition with each other. No. We're no. here to all win in the way that we were meant to with the gifts that we've been given and the talents that we get to use and create. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I love that. Yes, Kelly. I was going to say on that note, that reminds me, has anybody read The Gap and the Gain? The book, it's called The Gap and the Gain. I wrote that down from somewhere else. And that's the um, it. I'll find the author quickly, but really what it is, it's like stop instead of looking at like you say instead of looking at those four um to-do lists out of your 10 that are going to pop up what the gap in the game is it's where are you where did you start and where are you right now and what is the difference instead of looking at it negatively it's how far have you come so you know 100%. maybe yeah, so I'm now doing, I was talking to Donna today, and I'm now doing, I have a mini trampoline. So the woman I'm following, she's like one minute a day, that's it, one minute a day. And then next week, it'll be two minutes a day. So I'm not going to look at my lack of exercise. I'm going to look at my, how many times am I going to do my one minute? And that's the way to look at it that way instead. A hundred percent. That's why I said, set your, set your phone for a three and a half minute timer, head out your front door and go as far as till it goes off and turn around. Yeah. Every, every journey starts with the first step. It doesn't matter. And that's in business. That's in life. That's in eating. That's in exercising everything. Nothing happens without action. And it's not that you didn't take a one hour action or, you know, if you want to learn a skill set. Find somebody who's doing what you're doing and learn that one thing and implement one thing. Then you're going to be able to see like what you gained, right? Absolutely. Like the problem is when you do it all, it just, it's, it's just overwhelming. It's too much. All right, guys, it is time to say goodbye. We have ran over about four minutes. I apologize that we were having such a great time and so, so many golden nuggets were being thrown in the bucket and in our toolboxes. And I just love that. Please, please, please take a snapshot of yourself, a screenshot of all of us, whatever. Go to your social media and go to our Facebook membership group and post and tell people what you've been doing the last hour. What have you learned? What did you love about what you've learned? tell people about it because what we're doing right now is trying to grow our membership but with only positive people we don't want everyone we want the greatest of the great ones that want to build their business and help each of us build as well all right be sure to save the chat three little uh, dots down at the bottom of the chat Click that, it will come up and say, save chat. And then it will go down um, in your, I know mine goes into my documents. Some people say it goes down into the downloads. One and I'm going to say one more thing, LaDonna. Yes. And this is, this is for you. Like she has put you all or made a place for you all here. You need to make sure that you make appointments with everybody on the screen, if you have not, if you do not know them. Yes. And even if you because know them. Because that you is how you network. Them for 60 days. Sorry, Sherry. Yes, You're Sherry right. is right. 
And even if we know each other, if you haven't made an appointment with someone in the last 60 days, you need to recreate an appointment. Sherry, I cut you off. I'm sorry. Please finish. No, that's all I wanted to say is just that if you haven't met with the people on the screen, let's do that. That's how we help one another when we understand what each other does. Absolutely. So. Have Thank a you. beautiful um, evening. I hope to see everyone on Throwback Thursday. Heather will be back with us, and she is our speaker, um, 11.30 Central Time on Thursday. All right. Bye-bye now.